But Mjolnir or Thor's hammer is actually a really nice, fairly simple carving project. The only main challenges with it are the details, um, which you have the option as to how much detail that you put on it. Um, so the lines that are actually on it are really just, just a guide. If you want to add more detail, by all means do. It would look great with some Celtic knot work or some um, traditional Nordic uh, lines and decorative carving on the surface. Um, you'll see on the ones that I've done in the past, I do add some extra decoration. But other than that, it's a relatively simple shape to cut out and offers a good learning experience for, for newcomers and intermediate carvers alike. So before you get started, assuming that you want to add these details on, take a photograph of the kit as it is when, before you begin, and that way you've got an image to reference back to for the lines, and you can draw them back on if you remove them. So the first thing we're going to look to do is to remove all of the wood that sits outside of the lines. If you've got any wood outside of the main hammer part, just shave it down gently and bring the, the outside of the wood all the way in to meet the line. From there, you'll want to start shaving down this area. Remember, cut in towards the center of the wood, not out. If you try and carve the way out, then you'll find that the knife gets caught and jumps and could actually snap the, the piece. Once you've done these lower areas, come up here and start to shave the wood in, in a sort of sweeping action. Be careful not to go too far because you don't want to cut off these little mandrels on that end. When you get up to that point, make horizontal cuts underneath and then shave the wood up to it to remove the wood from there. And then you can just take the top off as needed. Now in terms of the shape, in terms of three-dimensional shape, it's entirely up to you how you wish to form it. When I've carved Mjolnir's in the past, what I look to do is to create a centre high point. In this piece of wood it's quite useful because you can actually see there's a paler area running right down through the centre of it. So I leave that as a high point and then angle the sides down. Now you don't want to take it, it's, as it's not a leaf, you don't want to make it too thin at the outer edges. So maybe leave it two or three millimetres thick on either, on either side and then make the centre pretty much the full depth of the wood, so try not to take too much away. Do the same up here, but not universally, because you'll want to keep these mandrels in place. To keep these in place while you shape this end of the hammer, use the tip of the knife and score along those lines, and repeat around the rope there as well. And then as you shave down, you'll just remove thin layers of wood, but you'll leave the mandrels and the rope intact. Once you've got the rough shape ready, if you're not entirely happy with the finish, you can always use the sandpaper that's supplied within your carving kit just to give it a, a better, cleaner and neater finish. Start with the, the coarsest grit, which is the 120, as marked on the back. Move to the 180 and then the 240 for a really fine finish. When you're happy with that finish, you can come in and start to do the detail work. As before, use the tip of the knife and score along each line. And once you've scored along those lines, make very fine angled cuts that come up and meet your original score line and that will remove tiny slithers of wood. Each one of those slithers will start to define the separation between these bands of rope and the same for the mandrels at the top. If you want to do these outer lines, just to give it a slight graduated step inside, same again, use the tip of the knife, score all the way around and then just slice in from the outside or alternatively, if you want the outer edge to be raised, follow that line but then slice from the inside towards the out. Once you've added all the details that you want, all that's left to do is to take your little screw in eyelet and screw it right into the top centre of your pendant. 
so that way it should be balanced for the wearer. Once you've screwed it in and it's tight, you can then just thread the cord through and it's ready to wear. I hope you enjoy carving.